What does it mean to know where nowhere is? <laughs> um, well, you know, I guess I was singing about how relieved I feel in general, you know, to have met Colleen, you know. I think before I met Your her, wife. my wife Colleen, before I met her, I was in full speed rock cliche mode, you know, you know, not that I'm a rock, you know what I mean? I was doing all the dumb things that we're kind of known for and since the 90s. And so it just sort of, when I met her, it made me think, uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to miss the boat. <laughs> I felt mm. uh, maybe, you know, last chance at love or something. And uh, so, yeah, so I just look at that whole business of the way I was acting as kind of nowhere, you know, or going it's, nowhere. It's not the only song that refers to your past on this record. There's uh -huh. a song called Snake Road that's uh, particularly reflective of, of your moments of temptation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you recently told the Financial Times that there were a lot of women in your life after your first record contract. You, well, I, mean, you, I got to watch it with envy. I can be too candid, and then I, I can see a headline that's embarrassing. <laughs> so what, but what, why are you? Why is all of this on your mind now? You know, good question. I, I, maybe because I'm turning 50 next year, maybe because I have enough distance now. I mean, I always had a lot of regret about things. Anyway, I'm an insecure person. and uh, But I don't know. I just found myself, um, uh, you know, I, I, when, when we made the Long Player album, we had so much rejection for it initially when we were, when we were shopping it around. And I started writing these songs, you know, like Nowhere to Go and Sneak Out the Back Door about kind of, my usual themes of wanting just to disappear kind of thing. And I don't know, from that, I just started writing these sort of wistful songs, and uh, I don't really understand why. Uh, yeah, but, Nowhere you know. to Go is is a song that, as you say, you, you, were, you were writing that r shortly after recording Long Player, Late Bloomer, but before it came out yeah. and became your most successful record to date. Yeah. So, uh, um, but is, so the, but this, the sentiment on Nowhere to Go, a beautiful song, feels like sort of that your life is at a dead end. Well, I, that's, that's how I felt initially. I was also, I didn't want to write it to, I wanted it to be kind of a humorous song, actually. And you know, I sing about being run over by a lawnmower in there, for example. You know, it was like a, I was thinking of a Chaplin-esque kind of thing. And, you know, because I was on such a high after working with Bob and thinking, wow, you know, feeling kind of like I was back in the game. And then, you know, during the making of that album, we had so much interest from labels in the States, which hadn't been the case. You know, all these people say, oh, we want to hear it, we're looking forward to it. And then have have the same people say, well, it, it's too commercial or something. I just thought, you know, I, I was feeling at the time, I, man, whatever I'm handing out, you know, they're not interested in. And so I wrote Nowhere to Go, but, but I wrote it to cheer myself up, you know. Which that's the great thing about songs, you know. You're feeling you write sad songs to cheer yourself up. You know what? Well, you know how like "Pennies from Heaven," you know, or the Depression era songs uh -huh. made people feel comforted, you know, or, or "Happy Days Are Here." Ra yeah, wrap your troubles and dreams and right. things. You know, I feel that a sad song can have that effect, and 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 certainly when you write one, and and all of a sudden you're singing out whatever your troubles, uh, it has an, a, you know, yeah, it has a good effect, I think, on your state of mind. This reflective mood, you say it's a, you're turning 50 next year. You also had a health scare. Yeah. Was that part of what led to the songs on this record? It kind of uh, influenced the, sort of the later ones, like The Morning Light and um, I had one called Back of My Hand. That was kind of how I felt. I was in this, you know, I feel even bad talking about it because obviously there's people get a scare and then it's, and then they get bad news, you mm -hmm. know. And I had a, 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 you know, a period of three months, I guess, where I was, you know, you're waiting for tests, and then you're get, waiting for test results. And, um, you know, when you're a singer and you find out there's a lump in your throat, you're, it's a bit kind of, you know, I, I just didn't know what I was up against. So, so yeah, you know, I'm walking around in, in a fog for a while and just wondering if this was something I was going to have to be, like, fighting all next year or if it was going to put all my plans on hold and... I don't know. It was just the not knowing that was kind of scary. Now, how did you deal with that period of not knowing? Just like I always do, I wrote songs about it. And, uh, and like I say, a few of them ended up on the back half of the record. There were some songs that came in. Uh, Deepens With Time was another one. And, uh, uh, you know, and then I, during the making of the record, I actually had to come back to have a CAT scan and, and then wait for the results. But, but like, like I say, it, it, it turned out to be this thing, this benign thing. And You said the specter of death was in my head. I was thinking about it all the time. Yeah, well, it was on my mind, you know. I was definitely wondering about, like in the morning light, I'm wondering, the, you know, like a lot of people wonder what happens when we die? Do we get to see the people that we love again? Is 
how does it work, you know, and, and no one knows. And it's not that I haven't thought about these things before, but when you don't really know what you might be up against, uh, you know, it definitely was on my mind. I don't remember saying specter of death, but maybe I did, you know. Did oh, I say that? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a quote. I thought maybe the bio right? guy said that. But, uh, <laughs> well, maybe the bio guy yeah. said that. Uh, um, you, you know, I'm thinking, thinking about you and think, you know, you know, the, 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 there's this joke. I mean, but it's rooted in reality amongst um, Persians that we think. Uh, Life is suffering. You know, we're always the people that, that have are hard up. And well, Buddha and, said that, right? Buddha, yeah. Yeah. And, and and Jews yeah. uh, th- you know, talk about you know uh, having. And I wonder about you. Um, I'm not sure that you're Persian, or not, <laughs> but you. But there's a recurring theme that that despite initial fears, things work out for you. You worried desperately about the last record, and then it turned out to be. I mean, I think you were here yeah. on the release date of the last record, and you were kind of shrugging your shoulders, going, "I don't know if you know. Well, I'm well, just lucky that this got made. I don't know if it's gonna if anybody's gonna hear it. I hope they will." And then it turned into a successful record. Do you take comfort maybe in expecting mm-hmm. things will go wrong? Yeah, you know, I saw a, um, an article about me where they said glass half empty songwriter. You know, and I, I don't know. I like I say, I think it goes back to interviews. Like sometimes I do worry about things, and I, and I worry about where I fit in in this whole thing. And and every record, is a, you know, I feel like in a, you know the the dad, the nervous father outside the you know the waiting room waiting for his kid to be born. And and once it comes out, and it, then I stop worrying about it because then it's out of my hands. And and then you know people say nice things or or you know you see bad reviews as well. But I, I just think. Um, but sometimes I think of the most horrible outcome. Yeah. So that I'm safe. <laughs> if if something if it doesn't work out. I guess it is a, a safety mechanism to kind of not get your hopes up too high. And like this record, because it was such a, a departure from the last one. You know, the last one was very polished. You know, and uh, uh, you know this one, there's no click track or anything or auto tune and and. Um, you know, part of me thought maybe I should just work with Bob again because that one did so well. But then these were very different songs, and you know, so there was part of me that all the fans that I, the new fans I made from the last record, maybe they wouldn't like this one as much. But you know, all this stuff is huge in my life. It's very small in in, in terms of the, the rest of the world. But this will, these are the things I worry about. You know, back with the great producer Mitchell Froome, yeah. uh, who's worked with you many times, also with Randy Newman, with Tom Waits, with Cheryl Crow, with Los Lobos. Um, you you share a birthday with Bowie and Elvis Presley and Elvis. Sorry, <laughs> the Bowie part means more to me. Although I, you know, oh, all, all, due, all due respect to Elvis as well. Uh, you, you said the song he released this year mm-hmm. on on your birthday. Where are we now? Very famously, out of nowhere, Bowie comes out with this song. Moved you? Yeah. Uh, why, why? Well, it was my birthday, and I couldn't think of a better birthday present than. Like I found out about it. Like I think I was on. I'm on Twitter now, which is a new thing. And I, and I think that someone had, had tweeted that Bowie had a new single. I was what you know, and and I don't know how he managed to keep it hidden until until that day. And then when I saw it, it was such a. I mean, the vi- you've seen the video, right? Of it's course. a very it's a very kind of disturbing video. It's all claustrophobic, and I and I and I couldn't quite read the expression on his face. You know, like it, does he look scared in the in the, like you know when he's singing, he looks very. Forlorn. Uneasy or something. Uh, uh. And um, I just thought it was such, such, such a beautiful song, you know, and I, it was great that it came out at, at this particular time because, you know, um, obviously in pop music today, and you know, and there is a lot of sort of frivolous stuff, you know, and people singing about dancing all night or whatever they're singing about. And to hear a song that was very poetic and, and very... Um, and hear him sounding slightly older, because that's yeah. something that we yeah. haven't heard before, you know, something fragile about Bowie that I just found very moving. Um, I, I want to make sure there's enough time for you to play one more song. But you've said, I really do think this is the record I've been trying to make my whole career. Yeah. It's a pretty heavy thing for Ron Sexsmith to say, given that this is your 13th album and you've made some spectacular ones. Tell me why you said that. Well, I think with the early ones I did with Mitchell, the first three, I, you know, I... I love those records. I'm proud of all the albums, but, but I, you know, um, I don't think I sang all that well back then. And and some of those records too, even though I was a, they were singer songwriter albums, they were a bit weird. You know, like Chad Blake was doing weird things with someone would slam a door, and then all of a sudden that's on the record. You know, <laughs> and and so there was something a, a bit lo-fi or whatever, which was again I'm not a producer, so I just went with it. But this record, I felt we were making a proper singer songwriter album, 
it's a bit it's almost like those old Neil Diamond ones or you know with the acoustics everything sounds warm and there's lavish yeah, arrangement yeah. so I felt Mitchell's I think you know we've we both improved you know he's worked with Randy Newman a lot and I think he's picked up a lot of his uh, arrangement you know ideas and stuff but I don't know I just felt we both were on the same page and and but I think when I'm on my deathbed someday this will be one of the ones that I think that turned out good, you know? Congrats, my friend. Thanks. Enjoy your great career. Thank you very much.